Hey, Rick. Rick? You there? Oh, oh, sorry. Hey, Lisa. Sorry, I was distracted, which happens to be the topic of today's show. So speaking of distraction, maybe we should... Uh, oh, shiny thing. Um, Let's just jump right into things. Clearly, the attention crisis is real. There is so much competing for our attention and not just squirrels. We seldom think of it, but each interaction we have comes with a cost. Our attention and that of the person we are engaging with. Ooh, this is so true. And I would wager that most of us are pretty careless when it comes to attention, and we don't value it as the scarce resource that it is. Um, I was watching a Korean variety TV show, as I'm known to do, Running Man, by the way, amazing show. And a competition was on where the host needed to guess the top three answers to uh, the questions on a survey that the show had conducted with real people online. And maybe this says something about my own level of distraction, as I don't actually remember the exact rankings. But one of the top pain points for couples that they ended up guessing is when the other partner is spending more time on their phones than with the other person. That finding isn't too surprising to me. And I think it helps illustrate the fact that attention doesn't scale. You might think we're multitasking, um, but those around us, our romantic partners and our colleagues, I'm sure will tell us otherwise. I think that competition shows that there's, there's a mismatch. We're often careless with our attention both how we give it and how we ask for it, even though it's one of the most powerful ways to demonstrate that we value, care for, and respect others. Totally. And I, and I think these are all key points and ingredients in the building of trust, right? I, I like how you mentioned colleagues earlier, as this really applies to our professional relationships too, right? Meetings are a great example, both in how we give and ask for attention. How often do we consider if this really actually needs to be a meeting, right? And when you have data showing that nearly half the workforce says that meetings are the number one time sink in the office, um, I think it's obvious that we need to reconsider if meetings really need to happen as frequently as they do. I mean, with almost 75% of people admitting to doing other work during meetings, over 90% just daydreaming and almost 40% of people confessing to having fallen asleep in meetings, it really makes me question how relevant they really are. Oh, and by the way, quick side note, we actually developed an app for this to determine whether or not your meeting should be a meeting. Um, And we'll drop that link in the show notes. I'm thinking about those stats and I know I'm among those, at least for doing other work during meetings and daydreaming, maybe not sleeping, at least not that I'm willing to admit. And I know bad meetings happen a lot and they're a really expensive waste of attention, both in terms of capital, capital, they cost a lot, but also in terms of social capital. And I think we really need to reconsider how we're thinking about meetings and probably internal communication as a whole. To me, this begs the question, um, how are you asking your colleagues and employees spend their attention? When we're asking for attention, we're using our social capital for better or for worse. If I ask for your attention and squander it, Rick, you probably won't trust me as much moving forward. But if I ask for your attention and bring you lots of value, it will have a worthwhile experience for you. And you'll likely trust me the next time I say, hey, Rick, pay attention to this. Hmm. I think this is a really important point, Lisa. Um, I think there are some people who just use this spray and pray kind of shotgun approach, right? Thinking that more noise will eventually lead to a signal. And this can really make people lose interest and tune out altogether. Yeah, I think this is even beyond the, the shady spammers. I think the everyday manager or team lead doesn't really think about attention. And not because they're necessarily malicious or out to to manipulate people, but just because they don't, they don't know any better. Ooh, so good. I love that. It's not out of malice, right? But just habit or kind of what you know, right? And I think when you talked about social capital, I think part of that is thinking about attention or maybe focus time as capital itself. However, unlike capital capital, right, where you can earn more, uh, we've got a fixed amount and we get to spend the same amount of time or attention every day. And we need to really consider how might we spend it and ask for it in a more constructive way. 
I like this. I think what you're getting at is how might we be more intentional when it comes to attention, both in how we spend ours and value the attention of others. So maybe there's a challenge here for our listeners. For sure. So let's start with how we can better value the attention of others, because I think this one's pretty straightforward. Uh, When it comes to asking for the attention of others, I want to challenge our listeners just to be more thoughtful. When you're asking someone for their attention, are you bringing value to them in a way that they'll be eager to trust you the next time you ask for their attention? I know that most people say that you need to be you know, regular with communication, whether it's team meetings or emails or social media, but I think it's important not to simply go through the motions for the sake of doing it. It's about being mindful of why we're communicating and how we can make it valuable to whomever we're communicating with. So challenge number one, take a second when you're scheduling your next meeting, communication, or interaction with someone, what will you do to make sure that the interaction is super valuable to the other party? I really like that. I think taking that moment of thoughtfulness shows a lot of care and respect for others. So let's look at now um, spending our own attention. And I I think a challenge here is maybe to conduct our own attention audit. This is a simple exercise. And from my own experience, it's pretty revealing. So to conduct your own audit, start by writing down your top three priorities. Now go about your week and observe. How are you spending your attention? Does it align with the priorities you wrote down? If not, it's worthwhile to consider one, are these really your priorities? And two, are you spending your attention on what really matters? From there, you can go and make changes and spend your attention a bit more wisely. Thanks for listening to the Interest Podcast. And if this resonated with you, be sure to click that subscribe or follow button and leave us a five-star thumbs up review. We would also love for you to share with a friend because after all, trust is an infinite game and it's better together. And now a quick word from our sponsors. The move to working from home hasn't been easy for everyone. Over at Spotlight Trust, we're happy to introduce the Reimagining Remote Virtual Studio. This is the most comprehensive people-centered program for leading a virtual work experience that builds trust, belonging, and engagement. You'll walk away from the virtual studio with practical, actionable ways to lead your people forward into a lasting, more human remote future. Enrollment is now open, and today is the best day to sign up to secure one of the limited spots at the lowest price. The workshop starts on October 25th, so go to spotlighttrust.com slash reimagining dash remote to learn more and enroll now. That's spotlighttrust.com slash reimagining dash remote. We'll see you in the studio.